of worship on behalf of the congregation of Burnt Hills United Methodist Church and Pastor Doug and myself, we welcome you and we hope that this time of worship, of song, of prayer and scripture offers you peace and strength and provides nourishment for your faith journey to focus on living each day as a follower of Jesus Christ. In our shared faith journey, we trust and we affirm that God's love has called us together and that God's loving spirit leads us forward. Trusting in that and turning our hearts to worship, let us sing or listen to this lovely hymn written by our friend Bishop William Boyd Grove, God whose love is reigning over us. Let us sing. following along in for the last couple of weeks from the fourth chapter beloved let us love one another because love is from God everyone who loves is born of God and knows God whoever does not love does not know God for God is love God's love was revealed among us in this way God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us. And God's love is perfected in us. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment because as God is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached 
perfection in love. We love because God first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from God is this. Those who love God must love their human siblings. Our gospel reading this morning is being read by Jan Tunison. The scripture reading this week is from the book of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. The book of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. disciples young at heart. You just heard Mrs. Tunison read where Jesus said to his disciples, I am the vine. And maybe that sounds kind of funny because obviously Jesus is not a vine, really. He's just kind of trying to paint a picture. So I brought a forsythia vine. Mrs. Adams sent us some gorgeous branches of various plants to help us think about what Jesus might have been talking about. He was trying to say something about staying connected and paying attention to God, learning from Jesus. You know, it, this is very beautiful and it's also a little sad because now that I've cut it, it will stop blooming and won't turn green with the rest of the plant. You know, if you think about it, Grapes won't ripen if they fall off the vine, and apples can't grow if they fall off the tree or if their branch breaks off the tree. And so it was just a picture that Jesus was painting to remind us to stay connected to one another and stay connected with God, to pay attention to what Jesus has to tell us, some ways staying hard has been really hard. Staying connected has been really hard this past year during the pandemic. I hope that you've been reading Bible stories and talking with your families at home. And we hope that very soon we'll all be together at church and we'll see you so that together we can be connected and can keep learning together about following Jesus so that we can grow as disciples. This is our hope and our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn this morning actually talks about the vine as well. Listen for it. The hymn is called, O Blessed Spring.
join me in a moment of quiet prayer. In these moments, O oh God, and in each of our days, remind us, guide us, lead us, that we would seek connection with you, following in the ways of Jesus. Amen. Every once in a while, I think it's on Sunday nights, I catch a show on PBS called Finding Your Roots. And in it, Dr. Henry Louis Gates invites two guests each week. They're usually public figures from entertainment or government. And he sits with them and by searching historical documents and then DNA searches, Dr. Gates is able to create huge family trees for each of his guests. And many of them had had little idea of their ancestry, especially those guests for whom generations of records and even names had been lost in the shadows of slavery. So this past week, he discovered that the singer-actress Audra McDonald is actually through a branch of DNA, a distant cousin to another performer with whom she had actually shared the stage in a Broadway production of Raisin in the Sun. She was shocked and delighted to find that connection and to see her family tree branching out and out through time. Now, in John's Gospel that you heard Jan read this morning, Jesus describes himself essentially as the trunk of a tree or the main vine in an arbor. And it's this great living image, metaphor, Jesus as the conduit through which what we now call the xylem and the phloem carry water and nourishment, bringing life to the reaches of the plant or the tree, bringing leaves and blossoms and fruit and all those things that we're so excited about at this time of year. So clearly that's an image that is both similar to and different from a family tree, which is a two-dimensional document, in that Jesus is trying to describe a living relationship that crosses time and distance and binds God's people together. I am the vine, you are the branches. And he reminds us that the branches are living and growing only because and only as long as we are connected to our source. I'm really feeling kind of bad about cutting that branch of recipia. If we were to extend this metaphor into 21st century language and understanding, Jesus might also say, I am the vine and I am the DNA in the vine. The source of nourishment, the fiber of connection, and the timeless pattern of life. And then, when we put this vine image together with John's letter, as our lectionary does for us today, we see that that DNA, that connection, that life force is summed up in one word. I'm sure you heard it. That word is love. And really then, who needs a sermon after reading the letter of 1 John? Since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God if we love God one another, God lives in us, and God's love is perfected in us. God is love. Those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Pretty simple. And yet, as the poet said, between the idea and the reality, 
falls the shadow. Because there are questions. You know, what, what does love look like? How do we know? And we do know from deep and difficult conversations in church or even from life experience at family dinner tables that we don't all always even see love in the same way. You might say we don't all have the same love language. Sometimes we can't agree on what the loving action in a situation is. We've certainly seen that in our world, in our denomination, and yes, even in our congregation and probably our homes. That's just, friends, our human condition. It's a reality that Christians have lived since day one. Doesn't surprise Jesus, I'm sure. He knew this would be how it is. There would be struggles and disagreements. He knew his 12 disciples were only human. He knew we would be human as well. And so he urged them, and by extension urged us, to stay connected to him in order to live in love the best that we can. The branch cannot bear fruit unless it abides in the vine. And so this disciple writing this letter, identified as John, probably not precisely the same John who wrote the gospel, but identified with the same community, writing this letter to the infant church as it struggled to find its way, said, abide in love. That's how you stay rooted in God. I like to think he's saying, do the best you can and keep asking God for help. The writer made it plain, though, that those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom we have not seen. Pretty clear, love your human siblings, yeah. The ones right in front of us, the ones you have seen doing things that absolutely puzzle or even offend you. The ones you str strongly disagree with about whatever the controversy of the day is. The ones you don't understand, really, Jesus, Sometimes we wish for an easier commandment. That's a struggle for all of us. Love your human siblings. I attended an event, well, an online event, on Monday with faith leaders from around the country. And one of the things that was part of the conference was watching and discussion, discussing a film that's called Same God. It's a documentary about one person's journey of faithfulness and love and connection and disconnection. I recommend it if you have the opportunity to find it. The film traces how Professor Larisha Hawkins essentially did what Doug, Pastor Doug was talking about last week in the message. She laid down her comfort to stand with others. See, she decided in December 2015, as a resident of Chicago, looking at her city, she decided that as part of her Advent faith journey, her devotion to God in Jesus, she would wear a hijab through Advent because she could see and she grieved how Muslim women were being treated in her city. She was moved to stand, literally stand with her body and her clothing alongside neighbors who were also people of faith, though a different faith. And because of the way that she spoke about this, because it became public, 
for whatever reason, her employer, a Christian college, terminated her. She was tenured, and then she wasn't. She was cut off from her community, but she remained clear that for her, the way to stay connected with Jesus was to continue to stand with those whose safety was endangered. I felt like her actions seemed to say what the letter writer was saying. Those who do not love a brother or sister in front of them. How can they love God whom they've not seen? That kind of love, that putting yourself on the line love, that's a calling. It's a discipline. It can't be built by sentiment or even human willpower, I don't think. I think it's a faith practice that grows and bears fruit in praying and paying attention to God's guidance in our lives. There's another line in this letter. Because as God is, so are we in this world. That's a sentence that I never took note of before, but as I worked with this passage and the gospel reading this week, it just kept coming back to me. This sentence is a challenge and a commission. As God is, so are we in this world. We talked about it in Bible study on Friday morning. What does that look like? To live in God's presence and to live out God's presence of generosity and graciousness and welcome. Because, as someone said, we may be the only Bible that some people will ever read. And so my prayer out of these scriptures is that church here, church in general, may be the workshop for learning to practice that disciplined love here in community and out there in God's world. Since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us. May it be so. Amen. together now in a time of prayer. Each week we lift up the names of our loved ones and our congregation members who are in need of prayers. And so this week let us begin with Dottie as she continues to seek healing and wisdom for dealing with her health concerns. For Paula and Karen, Earlier this week, we learned that Paula was having some health concerns and was in the hospital for several days. We're thankful that she is now home, but they continue to be in need of our prayers as she deals with this health concern. We want to lift up in prayer all those who participated in the virtual crop walk on Saturday. They give of their own time and the proceeds of their work go to feed the hungry, including some that goes to Schenectady Inner City Missions. In sadness, we lift up today Jim and his family, a longtime member of the congregation who moved to be near his children years ago, and we learned passed away this past week. 
And we also continue with prayers for others of our family and friends who have passed away and for their families. In recent weeks, we have lost Janet, whose service was here yesterday, and Don, whose service was last week. We also want to continue with prayers for Joan and Kevin. We're happy to report that Joan is now home after a stint in the hospital and then some time in rehab, but she continues in need of prayer for recovery and for going forward. We lift up Mary Lou, who's home from rehab and continues her recovery. She's thankful to be home and thankful for all the prayers that she has received. And there are all those who we pray for week after week because their concerns have been so long term, like Jane and Eric and Don and Gail. We pray for all those friends of ours who have been in long-term care and unable to see family and friends for so many months. We give thanks that in these days those places seem to be opening up again as the vaccine and other health care has helped to battle the pandemic. We pray that one day soon such limitations will be completely gone and we will once again be able to spend time with all of our friends and neighbors. We pray for all those who have lost loved ones or suffered in some way as a result of the pandemic. And we pray for those who do what they can to help those in need, the doctors and nurses, the support staff, all the first responders, everyone who for the last more than a year has given up their own time and put their lives at risk to help their brothers and sisters in our communities. Lord, we ask all these names be lifted up and also that you now hear those names that each of us holds in our hearts. Gracious and loving God, we lift up these names and we give thanks for all that you do for us each and every day. We give thanks that you are with each of these people we have named, wrapping your arms around them, providing comfort and strength, and that you be with their doctors and other caregivers. We give thanks for the community in which we live, all the friends and neighbors who are willing to do so much for each other. All those who are part of this church community who give of themselves in small and large ways, not for their own good, but for the good of others. So much has happened in the last number of months and lately we've been coming to you with prayers for peace. But we also ask prayers of love. We know that you love us and help to guide us through your spirit that we love each other. That we lift up whoever we can, whenever we can. And that we be the loving community Christ sought for us to be. In all our ways, Lord, we ask that we remember those simple words that Jesus taught to his disciples and that we let them guide our life each day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us join our voices together in our closing hymn, Your Love, 
O God. and God's love in the time and space of our world. Let us reflect God's care, generosity, grace, and love. And as we go, let us remain connected to the source of that love in Christ. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you. Amen. Say.